So in this Chicago Bears video, I want to talk about five players that I think the Chicago Bears could go ahead and sign or trade for, basically just add to their team this offseason for the 2023 NFL season. If you are a fan of the Chicago Bears, make sure to leave a like on this video and leave your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video and let's get right into it. So the first player that I think the Chicago Bears can add this 2023 NFL offseason is Yannick Ngakwe of the, uh, of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, I know what you guys are probably thinking, why do I keep saying Yannick Ngakwe when it's clearly Yannick? Well, if you actually go to his uh, pro footballreference.com under pronunciation it actually says yannick so uh, y-a-h n-e-e-k yannick ngakwe so i'm going to keep saying yannick you might not like it but that's i believe how it is actually pronounced according to uh, profootballreference.com so i'm going to go off that pronunciation but pronounce it however you want but basically uh yannick ngakwe is a pretty talented player right i'm a little bit surprised that uh, that ngakwe is still unsigned to this day uh you know yannick ngakwe put up pretty solid stats last year uh, with the indianapolis colts uh, he appeared in 15 games played. He had nine and a half sacks, right, for 29 tackles, 18 solo tackles, and just overall was a very solid player. Now, uh, what Ngakwe does pretty well is he just gets to the quarterback, right? Is he going to stop the run? No, that's not what he does. He's not really a, much of a run stopper, but when it you know when it comes to pressuring the quarterback and sacking the quarterback, Ngakwe does exactly that and does that at a very high level. And if you are a team like the Chicago Bears, uh, looking to add some edge rushers to your team, uh, players that can get to the quarterback and be a presence on defense, no one's better than Ngakwe. So I'm a big fan of his game. I'm a little bit surprised that he's unsigned to this day, though. You know, the last couple of years have been a little bit turbulent for Ngakwe, right? Uh, playing in 2022 for the Colts, playing in 2021 for the Raiders. Uh, he split 2020 between the Vikings and the Baltimore Ravens. And then, of course, prior to that, uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, you know, not a Pro Bowl caliber player, not one of the better um, edge rushers in football, but he's still a pretty solid option, especially for a bargain free agent signing at this point. I would take a flyer on him, right? The Bears have uh, some pretty big time holes in their defense. They have some cap space to make this work. So I want to take a chance on a player like Ngakwe. Gawkway, who's basically a proven commodity at this point uh, to get at least eight sacks a season. I believe in every NFL year that he's played, he's had at least eight sacks, you know, eight to 12 sacks. That's a pretty impressive resume, uh, pretty consistent. And that's all you can really ask for at this point of the 2023 NFL offseason. Uh, I do believe in Gawkway as well uh, is only 28 years old. So uh, if it doesn't work out, right, it's a one-year contract. It is what it is. He'll probably once again find a new team in 2024. But I actually think the Bears could be a pretty cool long-term home uh, for Unique uh, Ngakwe. So um, I'm going to go with uh, Yannick Ngakwe uh, as my first player. That would be a free agency signing from the Indianapolis Colts to the Chicago Bears for the 2023 NFL season. Now, the next player that I think uh, the Chicago Bears can add to their team in 2023 is actually through the trade market, and this is Chase Young of the Washington Commanders. Now, there's been a lot of speculation the last couple weeks about Chase Young potentially being on the trade market, and the Bears seem to be a team that are linked to him quite a bit. So I think Bears fans want to go ahead and take a flyer on Chase Young, uh, especially what Zadarius Smith went for in the open or on the trade market a couple days ago. I believe he got traded for what, like a sixth and a seventh round pick or like a fifth and a sixth round pick. The asking price uh, for Zadarius Smith Smith wasn't even that high. Now, uh, I think Chase Young will probably be going for a package a little bit more lucrative than that, uh, given the fact that he is younger and the potential is there. But he's a pretty big injury risk, right? Uh, the last couple of years for Chase Young have not been ideal, uh, which is why his fifth year option got declined in the first place, right? The former second overall draft pick, it just hasn't been that pretty in the NFL so far. His first year was pretty phenomenal, right? A defensive rookie of the year named to the Pro Bowl appeared in 15 games played. But the last couple of years in 2021 and 2022 have been far from ideal, right? Last year only appearing in three games and only having five tackles in those uh, five tackles in those three games. So that's not very good. Uh, before that in 2021, uh, appearing in nine games played only at the 1.5 sacks so uh, Chase Young of course is basically it's been you know an unfortunate fall from grace uh, from his rookie year in the former second overall draft pick still has that potential right this guy is just 24 years old I really do believe that if Chase Young is healthy he could be one of the better defensive ends in all of football but the reality is is he going to be healthy? I guess only time will tell. But if you are a team like the Bears a team that probably aren't going to be a playoff team in 2023 let's just say it how it is you know, they're probably going to be improved from last year, but are they going to be a playoff team? I would say probably not. Why not take a chance on Chase Young, right? They accumulated draft capital last year. They have the cap space to make this work and sort of given the direction of this franchise. Why not take a chance on him? I would do this any day of the week, uh, especially if the asking price for him might be, you know, a second or a third round pick. 
I would do this no questions asked, right? Getting a player for cents on the dollar with high upside, you know, is there obviously an injury concern? Absolutely. But at this point of the Bears rebuild, it's a risk I would be willing to take personally. So if I was running the Bears, I would definitely explore the market for Chase Young. Uh, the Bears could add some defensive talent to this team. They have the cap space, as I mentioned before. So if Chase Young does perform well and does earn himself a new contract, the Bears could very well and happily pay this uh, pay this man. So I'm a big fan of Chase Young. I do believe that the last couple of years have been unfortunate. Uh, I do think this guy's going to be one of the better players in football when it's all said and done. It's just gotten off to a bit of a tough start. So if you're the Bears, why not acquire a player with high upside for cents in the dollar? So Chase Young of the Washington Commanders is the number two player on my list. So the third player that I think the Chicago Bears can add to their team is going back to free agency, and that is Leonard Floyd, formerly of the Los Angeles Rams. So sort of like in Gakwe, I'm a little bit surprised that Leonard Floyd is not signed to a team this offseason. Uh, Leonard Floyd, of course, won the Super Bowl championship a couple of years ago with the Los Angeles Rams. A veteran at this point, especially too, if you're a Bears fan, you know all about him uh, with him spending the first four years of his career uh, with the Chicago Bears prior to him going over to Los Angeles. Maybe a reunion could definitely be in store, right? Uh, Leonard Floyd is a tremendous player, um, sort of similar to uh, Ngakwe. He's a player that can get to the quarterback, not necessarily, you know, be a run stopper, although he's a better run stopper um, than Ngakwe, for example. I think Leonard Floyd at the linebacker position would be an awesome player for this team to add. Uh, having that Super Bowl championship experience with the Rams, uh, he can go back to a team where he's familiar with, an, organi uh, an organization that he's familiar with, a city that he's familiar with, and hopefully lead the Chicago Bears back into the playoffs and sort of show that veteran leadership and that experience that he gained over from Los Angeles to this relatively young Chicago Bears team. So, you know, the last four or five seasons, um, Leonard Floyd has been pretty healthy for the most part, which is always awesome uh, for a player that is on the wrong side of 30. Uh, Leonard Floyd is going to be 31 uh, years old in September. So getting a little bit up there in age, right? But the former ninth overall draft pick still uh, is a really solid option, right? I'm a big fan of his game. Uh, having nine sacks last year, nine and a half the year before and in 2020, he had 10.5 sacks. He's a player that can get to the quarterback and really provide that presence at the linebacker position that I think the Bears are lacking uh, with some of their moves the last couple of years. Um, you know, with guys like Roquan Smith, um, guys like Khalil Mack no longer being on the team, they could bring that back at a discounted price, in my personal opinion, with Leonard Floyd. So uh, if Leonard Floyd wants to go ahead and maybe join more of a rebuilding team uh, and, and a team that he, you know, once played for not too long ago, I think the Bears would be a phenomenal fit for him. So uh, the number three player on this list is Leonard Floyd, who I think is a pretty solid player you can get for a bargain that can provide high value uh, for the Chicago Bears in 2023. The fourth player that I think the Chicago Bears can add in 2023 is actually through the trade market and that is Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders. So I know the Raiders aren't actively shopping Josh Jacobs but I really do think with this contract situation um, you know upcoming and just based on the year that he had last year Josh Jacobs could very well be on the trade market right sort of like what we've seen so far with some other running backs around the league you know Austin Eckler Dalvin Cook, even Derrick Henry for that matter. Uh, some star running backs that are a little bit up there in age, not super old, but up there in age might be playing for some new teams simply due to financial details. So uh, Josh Jacobs, of course, had a phenomenal year last year in 2023. Absolutely amazing se uh, season, right? Uh, made the Pro Bowl, was just overall, you know, in the running for Offensive Player of the Year, was just a phenomenal player. Um, appeared in all 17 games played, had 1,653 yards on 340 rushing attempts. So I uh, was utilized quite a bit, but had a phenomenal year to show for it. Uh, 12 touchdowns um, and just overall an incredible play, right? 53 receptions. An amazing year last year uh, from Josh Jacobs, hoping to repeat that in 2023. Now, I know paying running backs isn't the most, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not the best financial decision. Uh, if you're Josh, you know, if you're a team like the Bears, but as I sort of mentioned before with some other players, the Bears have the cap space to make this work. And if the Bears want to take a step forward in 2023 and maybe take a little bit of pressure off of uh, Justin Fields in the passing game, and really have more of an uh, of an identity in the rushing game for this year. Josh Jacobs would be an amazing addition. Now, you would be trading for Josh Jacobs at his highest value, right? Josh Jacobs is only 25 years old, so uh, still relatively young. Uh, the former first round draft pick is only four years under his belt and seems to be getting better each and every season. So I'm a big fan of his game. Uh, I think Josh Jacobs brings a lot to the table. If he can repeat the success in 2022, uh, in 2023 with this Bears team, the Bears could be a playoff team. So uh, I think the Bears could definitely be adding a player, as I mentioned before, 
though, uh, they're going to be buying at the absolute highest price with his year that he had last year. But it could be a good move in the long run, right? Uh, allocate some of that money while you still can on the running back position. Um, have an offense that has Justin Fields, Josh Jacobs. Um, obviously, you know, they have Chase Claypool. They brought on DJ Moore. Uh, they have Cole Komet. They have some other players as well. Uh, this could be a pretty fun team to watch in 2023. If they were to add Josh Jacobs, he could be a phenomenal player in this Bears team and get paid accordingly. So uh, I think in Josh Jacobs' best interest, it could be actually um, wise for him to maybe explore the trade market if possible uh, to see if a team like the Bears, for example, that have the cap space uh, to sign you to a long-term contract might be interested. So uh, Josh Jacobs to the Bears intrigues me quite a bit. If you're a Bears fan, make sure to leave your thoughts down below. But the number four player on this list is Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders. The fifth player that the uh, Chicago Bears can add to their team in 2023 is also through the trade market and basically the same theme as running back. And that is Austin Eckler of the Los Angeles Chargers. So uh, unlike Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler actually requested a trade earlier on this offseason. It has basically been talked about in trade rumors ever since. Now, uh, talks have sort of died down a little bit, I think, regarding Austin Eckler in the trade market. Is this going to be pretty tough to move his contract uh, at this point? A little bit older than Jacobs, right? Uh, Austin Eckler is going to be 28 years old and actually a couple days now. So uh, getting to that point where you don't typically want to be paying a running back on his third contract per se, but um, Austin Eckler is a phenomenal player, right? Absolutely phenomenal player. Uh, last year in 2022, right? Uh, 915 rushing yards, but had 13 touchdowns. Uh, but where he's more utilized and where he's more effective is actually in the receiving game. 107 receptions uh, for five touchdowns as well. Just overall, an incredible year, right? 18 touchdowns in 2022, 20 touchdowns in 2021. Austin Eckler is a fantasy football god. Now, I know it's not fantasy football out here, but I actually do think Austin Eckler and how he sort of plays his game or he can be utilized best, you know, which is in the passing game game could actually be a pretty cool thing uh, for Justin Fields in 2023 to have access to, right? Uh, obviously, in 2023, there's a lot of pressure on Justin Fields uh, to succeed and to hopefully, you know, show signs that he can be the franchise quarterback there. Uh, they added DJ Moore to the team to hopefully give him a number one option at wide receiver. Uh, they're going to have a full year of Chase Claypool. Uh, they have, you know, tight ends like Cole Komet. I do believe they also added Robert Tunyon. So uh, some pretty solid options there. Now, if you want to help Justin Fields out in the passing game and more of those short yardage situations and more of the, you know, the back backfield passing. Austin Eckler is that guy. So uh, I think Austin Eckler and sort of like Josh Jacobs as well, if he wants to get uh, a new contract elsewhere, the Bears have a lot of cap space. So if Austin Eckler were to go there and perform well and really be a good thing for Justin Fields, maybe they pay him on a long-term contract because they have the money to make this work and they have the draft capital to make this work as well. And this could just be a pretty cool fit. And also too, a trade that could actually get the Bears closer to the playoffs than where they are right now. So uh, sort of like uh, Josh Jacobs, I think Austin Eckler could definitely be on the trade market um, if things go south in regards to their contract contract talks, uh, which I do believe they already have. So I'm a big fan of Austin Eckler's game. I think Austin Eckler could bring a lot to the table uh, on the Chicago Bears offense. And the fifth player on this list is Austin Eckler of the Los Angeles Chargers. So that is going to be it for these video uh, for this video. Those are just a couple ideas, you know, five ideas that I think uh, the Chicago Bears could pursue this offseason in regards to trading for players or signing players uh, on the open market and the trade market, respectively. As always, if you're a Bears fan, leave your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. Have a fantastic rest of of your day. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.